Hey guys, RC Review here. Um, and I just have a, a video about questions and answers. Um, so someone IM'd me with a couple questions, or a few people actually IM'd me with questions. And first of all, I'd just like to say thank you for asking me. Um, it's 100% okay to ask me any questions you have, just IM me. Um, I think once a month I'll put up a, like, a question and answer video um, for those really confusing questions. Um, and I'll just IM you back if it's something I can just tell you. Um, but since it's, I've only got a few questions, I guess I'll just make a short video about it. So one person asked me, why won't my battery charge? Um, I'm not going to say who it was that asked me, but they had a 2200 milliamp battery, 11.3 um, volts, uh, and it wouldn't charge. And I just like to say, a lithium polymer battery, they can never die. You have to keep at least 7 to 10% battery on this. If they get to 0% battery, the battery is junk. That actually happened to me. I, I left it charging for like a really long time, and the battery ended up swelling. Um, so, and he also said he charged it for a really long time, like eight hours. Um, and once again, the same thing happened to me. Don't charge it for over four hours because they can explode, leak, everything. Um, and this is not the best charger, but it's also not the worst. Um, it charges in about an hour to two hours, a uh, 2200 battery, um, three cell and two cell. So that's not a really good charger and it still charges that time. If you have a lithium polymer battery, I would say four hours at the most, no matter really what size. And on to the second question. Someone, a different person IM'd me and asked, what does this switch up here do on the transmitter? They had a regular six channel transmitter and they were asking about the switch on the left hand side for mode two above the throttle, for mode one above the ailerons. <clears throat> um, well, this is called the idle up switch or the 3D switch. Basically when you switch it, crud. Basically, when you switch it, um, all right, never mind. I thought I just changed that. When you switch it, it makes the blades or makes the motor spin at 80%. That way, this won't control. You can have this all the way down, and the blades will still be spinning. You can have this all the way up, and they'll be spinning the same speed. This just controls the pitch of the blades. So that's how you fly 3D. That way, you can go upside down and keep the same motor, and you give it a negative pitch. But when it's right side up, you want to give it a positive pitch. That's what helps 3D. Um, that idle up switch. Um, and on another example, right here, we have the DX5E. This is a five channel, or is a spectrum, it's a five channel receiver. It does not have the idle up switch because it's a five channel receiver. It has a different switch, it has the trainer and the rate switch. Uh, and then over here it has, oh here's the rate, here's a uh, channel changer. Um, here's the rate channel changer. It does not have that because it's a five channel receiver. That means it's not meant for 3D flying unless it's an airplane. And on to the last question. Someone just bought uh, I think a fourth person that I am to me just bought a new helicopter kit, the HK 450 TT, I believe that's what it was. Um, and they were building it, and they got to the part where they were leveling the swash plate, like leveling servos. They got everything set up. It was working. The belt was going in the right direction, and all the electronics were installed. And they asked me how to level the swash plate. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to unplug your battery. Hopefully you soldered them or you haven't soldered them yet. So you can still unplug them. So what you're going to do is you're going to unplug the battery. Or you're, you're going to unplug the motor from the battery. And then you're going to plug in the battery. So it's just charging the servos. Or the servos, the gyro, and the tail servo. And also you can unplug the gyro. That's something that you... That would probably be best. You unplug the gyro as well, and you plug the tail servo right or servo right into the receiver. 
Um, and then you take off. Let me take this off real quick. All of the linkages that are running, or the arms right here, you take them off. You just pull them off like that. This, this one pops off. There's the elevator, and then there's one more over there, and the last one in the tail. Then you plug in the battery, and you'll hear a few beeps, uh, things will settle down, and everything will get centered. That's when you put all your arms on, each one individually, and get them as close to level as possible. Once they're level, you can adjust the linkages to make sure your swash plate is level, and you're good to go. Then you can plug in your gyro to your tail servo, or you could plug in your tail servo to your gyro, plug the gyro into the receiver, plug the motor in, and you're good. Um, oh, wait, I forgot to mention, while the battery's unplugged, you're going to want to switch it into idle up, like this, while it's all off or on. Then you're going to bring this up to mid-stick. So do that before you do any of the placing. That way, because idle up will just control the blade of the pitch, the pitch of the blades. Sorry, I can't speak today. And that way you can really get all of your, um, all of your servos exactly straight to the swash plate. Uh, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And remember, you can always ask me questions no matter what it's about. Thank you.